Well, what do you know? According to this, making VFD is unconstitutional. Who could have imagined? Oh, I didn't see you there. I'm MBT. Today's 10-minute testing was made possible by the winner of the most recent Chalice Slime Monthly. To them, I'd like to say, Thank you so much for not making me play garbage. Thank you for not making me play Stun or Gusto or Cardian. Now back to the video. Wow, and Dragoon 2! <laughs> Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10-Minute Testing. As all of you should know by now, the winner of the Chalice Slime Monthly gets to recommend a custom 10-minute testing. This month's is a deck that, honestly, I'd been planning to make a video for, but never got good enough at to do so. Raid Raptor is a strategy with so many moving pieces, so many options, and so many different end boards that playing it perfectly is nearly impossible. But, now that my back is against the wall, I might as well play it imperfectly. Presenting Raid Raptor. Before we begin, a quick reminder, if you're interested in a custom TMT yourself, signups for the 128-person Chalice Slime Monthly are out right now. They are out right now this second. Uh, pause the video if you want to sign up, because by the time it's over, they are going to be full. So, here's the list, and... Oh god. I've read... maybe one of these cards? As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Chalice Slime monthly deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. With that out of the way, let's roll into Raid Raptor. Raid Raptor is an archetype of dark winged beast type monsters that have some sort of unnamed relationship with the Phantom Knights. Listen, I'm not trying to classify what they have. They're happy, and that's all that matters. These burgular bunguses can special themselves from the hand, the graveyard, the extra deck. They roost pretty much anywhere you'd expect extension to come from. They're also one of the very few archetypes poised to make use of the Rank Up Magic, a series of magic cards that help Xyz monsters rank up. Best of all, they've got one of the most powerful Link 2 monsters in the game in Wise Strix. By wielding a nest of situationally strong monsters in the extra, they can use their unparalleled extension, targeted bosses, and independently broken links to outclass nearly every other archetype. Except, they're hard! This is bar none one of the hardest archetypes I've ever had to play. The lines are extremely hand-dependent, the bosses are flexible to a point but lack generic non-destruction removal tools, and the deck has four Xenolocks, all of which restrict different types of summoning! Thankfully, the mysterious benefactor who provided me with this list also provided me with a guide, so I intend to follow their instructions up to the point where I... have to start making decisions. Hopefully, I'll spaghetti slightly less than my opponents and teach them to fear the second most powerful bird-based deck. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, the card that is still $15, Tribute Lanius. Next are New Raptor, 3 Strangle Lanius. After that are 3 Fuzzy Lanius, 3 Last Strix, 2 Mimicry Lanius, 1 Singing Lanius, 1 Raider's Wing, 1 Pain Lanius, and 3 Nibiru. For Rums, we're on 3 Skip, 3 Phantom Knights, 2 Soul Shave, 1 Revolution, and 1... Other Phantom Knights. We're also on three Cattle Call, three Droplet, two Twin Twister, one Nest, one Phantom Knight's Claw, and one Readiness, for some reason. In the extra, we're on Final Fortress, Ultimate Falcon, Satellite, two Arsenal, Air Raid, Revolution, Stranger, Blaze, Raider's Knight, two Force Strix, Shrag, and two Wise Strix. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Magical Explosion FTK. If you think Magical Explosion FTK doesn't sound particularly interactive, well, you might have stumbled upon why it's being included in this video. This aims to showcase what we intend to do going first. We've drawn one of our bread and butter combos, any Raid Raptor, a Cattle Call, and a Phantom Knight's Rum. We're going to lead with the Raid Raptor and then tag it out with the Cattle Call into any of the Revolution Falcons. From here, we'll activate the Phantom Knight's Rum in order to rank up into a copy of Arsenal Falcon, whose effect we will activate detaching the Rum specifically. We'll activate Strangle Lanius' effect to bring back a Strangle Lanius, thank you for not specifying yourself, and then we'll activate Wise Strix and the effect of Arsenal Falcon in sequence, so we can summon a copy of Ultimate Falcon. From here, we're going to summon from deck using Wise Strix's effect, then set a rum before going into Four Strix and activating Mimicry Lanius' effect so we can set the counter trap. At end step, we'll dome our opponents for a thousand and pass it back with an unaffected monster. 
Now, unfortunately, our opponent doesn't care about activating monster effects. Instead, they're going to attempt to draw their whole deck. They're going to do this by activating Tune Table of Contents three times. Ah, oh, god, just so much fun. And then firing off a copy of Allure of Darkness, banishing the Tune Barrel Dragon that they've added to their hand. They're going to equip our monster with the Broken Bamboo Sword, and unfortunately, it's not the one that we can rum out of. They're going to pop her up here and draw a couple of cards before activating Curse Bamboo Sword for a golden one. They'll fire off a card destruction and then activate Upstart Goblin. Oh no, that hand destruction is all the way off because we only have one copy of a card in our hand. They're going to go for the Numeron Network and then fire off Memories of Hope to draw four, but thankfully, I don't think it's going to be enough. They'll activate Golden Bamboo Sword again to draw two more cards. Double Numeron Network, what are the chances before going to battle phase and attempting to, yep, double their way out of this game? Now, thankfully, we do have Phantom Knight's Claw, so we will be able to prevent that from happening. Unfortunately, Ultimate Falcon is not immune to battle, so they will be able to walk over all of our monsters and then over Ultimate Falcon as well. We don't have very many ways to rebuild from this position, hilariously. They're going to go into Sunya and banish the entire board before sending a couple of cards and passing it back to us. We draw a Singing Lanius, which we can't summon. So we'll get in for 500 and hope for the best. We'll pass it back to our opponent who draws a serial spell. They're going to bring back this copy of Sunya and then go to the battle phase, walk over our fuzzy Lanius, and I just shouldn't have activated it. Now I've turned on their copies of Hand Destruction. They'll activate it a couple of times and set a blasting the ruins. We draw a Tribute Lanius. You know what would be really funny? If we use Tribute Lanius to send a copy of Readiness so they can't Magical Explosion us. Oh, having missed their opportunity, we're now going to activate Force in order to overlay for our giant Spell and Trap board wipe before going to the battle phase and getting in for lethal. So that's how the deck performs uninterrupted on the play, but what does it do on the draw? As you'll see in this game, it is more than capable provided the opponent has not opened any negation. Our opponent's playing Infernoble Knight, so I doubt that that's going to happen. They are playing some terrible cards like the <laughs> Metarot, but I guess you have to be considering Linkross's band. They'll activate the effect of Metarot for a copy of Ogier, then activate Ogier's effect to send a rain out. They'll go into an Isold and then activate Isold's effect, adding a <laughs> Roland to hand. I'm not reading that. They're going to summon a copy of Olivier from deck and then activate the effect of God Phoenix Gearfried. Then they will activate a Monster Reborn to bring back the rain out, which they will activate to get the Durandal back and then Ogier's effect to synchro summon afterwards a Roland. They'll activate Roland's effect, then equip it with a Durandal before activating Durandal, adding Sublime Knight, equipping Olivier, and passing turn. One negate, we can easily get through this. We're going to normal summon a copy of Tribute Lanius and then special summon a Fuzzy Lanius. We'll activate Tribute Lanius' effect and Oh, they let it resolve. Wow. Okay, we'll activate Mimicry Lanius's effect and overlay for a Raider's Knight. We're going to activate the effect of the Raider's Wing in our hand, then the Fuzzy Lanius in the graveyard to get the third one to our hand. We'll special the Singing and then activate the effect of Raider's Knight, which they will GPG. Okay, from here we can go into a Force Strix. We'll activate Force Strix's effect and then activate Strangle Lanius's effect from hand, skip forcing our Force Strix into a Revolution Falcon. We'll destroy that Roland. They'll take a thousand and we'll activate Strangle Lanius to bring back the Raider's Wing. We will summon a copy of Wise Strix and activate its effect for a Mimicry from deck. We already have everything we need before going into a Force Strix to get another copy of Strangle for next turn. We'll activate Wise Strix's effect to get a copy of Rank Up Magic Phantom Knight's Force and rank up into Arsenal. Now this is a little crusty. We have to go to the battle phase so they can't roll into Graveyard, attack in, activate Arsenal Falcon to get an ultimate Falcon, then attack in... Roland gives an attack boost? Are you kidding me? Oh my god, we are not gonna lose to me not reading Roland. We are not gonna lose to me not reading Roland. Come on. They draw a Squeak Knight, which is hilarious. They will go ahead and summon the other GPG from their hand before activating Ogier's effect and Olivier's effect. It is now indestructible. They will normal summon a copy of Expaladin and equip it with the Squeak Knight from hand. It's not even a Garnet. They'll activate Raynaud's effect to get back this copy of Durandal, equip the Durandal onto the Sublime Knight, but... I mean, this doesn't actually seem like lethal. They're going to go into a Roland, activate its effect, and then Regeki our wise tricks. Regeki! Regeki! Hey, why not? We'll take a fair amount of damage, but shockingly, we still have life points. Let's see what we draw off the top, and... Oh, God. Okay, looks like the game is going to last at least one more turn. We're going to begin with this Skip Force in Graveyard, and then follow it up with a copy of Tribute. We'll Special Summon a Fuzzy Lanius and go into a Wise Strix, but I am trying to Chain Block, and then realize I already have all three copies of Fuzzy accounted for. God, it would have been so good if we simply could have. As is, we're going to have to walk over the Roland and pass back to our opponent. Now, we're not exactly dead here. They Normal Summon a copy of Magius, and then Special Summon an Astolfo. They are really in on the Infernoble Knights. They'll activate Magius' effect and activate the effect of Icehold as well, before special summoning a rain out and using its effect to bring back the other GPG. They'll go into a Nightmare Unicorn, targeting the set card, we will flip readiness, and because it's now marked for destruction, it goes to the graveyard. They will equip their monster with Roland, use Astolfo's effect, and proceed to the battle phase. Our monsters can't be destroyed by battle, but we have got to find something here. We draw for turn. Yeah, that's not going to do it. We'll special summon the fuzzy, but we have no rank for. Let's concede. 
So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Zoo Lich and... <laughs> oh, God. Oh, wow. If this isn't every Zoo Lich hand I've ever drawn. It's got everything you could ever want, but it also has a Dark Magician and a Red Eyes Fusion. They're going first. They're going to lead with a copy of Zodiac Barrage, and afterwards they're going to fire the Zodiac Barrage in order to get a copy of Ram Ram. They'll overlay for a Hammer Kong. They'll overlay for a Dryden. They'll activate Eldland. Then they'll fire the Eldland, getting an Eldlich and pitching it and this copy of Conquistador to destroy the Eldland. That's going to send a copy of Hakkado to the graveyard. They'll go to end step and banish both Hakkado and Conquistador for a couple of Eldlixers. All right, I mean, we can probably do this. We're going to normal summon a copy of Tribute Lanius. They will Dryden in response. We will Forbidden Droplet, targeting the Dryden, and we should be home free. We'll activate Tribute Lanius' effect, sending a copy of Mimicry, then activate Mimicry's effect in order to get a copy of Strangle. We will Pain Lanius, so we can summon it from our hand, and then link summon a copy of Wise Tricks. We'll activate Wise Tricks' effect for a Raider's Wing, and then activate Strangle Lanius' effect in hand, so we can overlay for a Force Tricks. We'll activate Force Tricks' effect. This triggers the effect of Wise Tricks, and God, how many more rums do we really need? We'll skip Force this Force Tricks into a copy of Revolution Falcon, then we'll activate Revolution to destroy our opponent. Dryden. From here, we can activate Revolution Falcon's second effect to get that Force Tricks into the graveyard before going for a Fuzzy Lanius and bringing back the Raider's Wing. We'll overlay for a Raider's Knight, pitching the Fuzzy Lanius so we can go into a Stranger Falcon and trigger the effect of the Fuzzy Lanius, chaining the effect of the Phantom Knight's Rum to go into Satellite Cannon. Add Resolution, we'll activate the effect of Satellite Cannon and pop our opponent's back row. From here, we can go into Soul Shape Force for a Force Tricks and overlay for a Revolution Falcon, which is actually, actually lethal. <laughs> Holy guacamole! All right, let's go to game two! So it's time for game two, and I see why this looked bricky. They're playing a bad build of the deck. Best of luck to you and the Mad Golden Lord. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Red Eyes Fusion. They're going to wisely summon Dragoon, set one, and pass. We don't have a lot of ways to out a non-targetable, non-destructible monster, but we might be able to get to the battle phase. We're going to activate the effect of Fuzzy Lanius and Strange Lanius before firing off Lastrix and rumming our monster into a copy of Arsenal Falcon. We'll fire Arsenal Falcon and it gets dropleted. Okay, no big deal. We can activate the effect of Strangle Lanius to bring back Lastrix and go into a Wise Tricks. We'll go Arsenal CL1, Wise Tricks CL2 so we can resolve Wise Tricks' second effect later in the turn and get a guaranteed Ultimate Falcon. We'll go into Wise Tricks, then activate the effect of Ultimate Falcon to decrease the attack of the Dragoon, triggering Wise Tricks for a Soul Shave. Okay, I know the skip looks stupid here because Ultimate Falcon isn't affected, but we do need it in the graveyard for next turn. I promise it is 5-head. Our opponent's going to normal summon a copy of Thoroughblade and pitch a copy of Combo, <laughs> fantastic, before going into Borbo and proceeding to the battle phase. They will walk over our copy of Wise Strix and then make Chakanine. Oh no, shouldn't have gone for the doubles at end of main. We're going to fire off the Nibiru and our monster is unaffected. They will chain Zeus so we lose our soul shave, but still no big deal. They'll go for an Eldlich here, but that's all they're going to get for their troubles. They get to set a copy of Scarlet Sanguine. I don't actually know how we're going to out the 3800 defense point monster. We might just be waiting. We're going to bring back the Ar Arsenal, then we'll activate Nest, which we drew. We're going to put back the Wise Strix because we really need to get activating it. We'll trigger the effect of the Fuzzy Lanius and the effect of the Wise Strix to summon from deck a copy of Mimicry and then normal the Fuzzy Lanius because we hadn't yet. We'll go for the Force Strix, pitching this copy of Mimicry, and then activate Wise Strix's effect for the Phantom Knight's Rum. We'll activate Mimicry and then fire off the Phantom Knight's Rum only to be met with a Scarlet Sanguine. Okay, no big deal. From here, we can go into a Stranger Falcon and destroy that token. We'll proceed to the battle phase after... Okay, I have no defense of that one. And then hope that we can get over the Eldritch on the next crackback. Our opponent's going to go for the Scarlet Sanguine. They're going to set a copy of Conquistador before firing Eldritch. We searched Phantom Claw for this reason, so we don't have to deal with the next one. They're going to go for a Hakero and switch their monster to attack position, getting over our Wise Tricks. This is going to be a rough turn. We can't nest targeting the Wise Tricks because they'll chain Hakero and cut us off from Wise Tricks forever. Our other one is banished. So we have to last Strix for, unfortunately, a defense position do-nothing monster. They're going to activate both of their trap cards so they don't die, and we're set up next turn for a Raid Raptor Nest. This turn, unfortunately, we are just fueling their graveyard. They'll draw for turn, thank god they whiffed, and they'll pass back to us. They'll activate the effect of Hakedo and Conquistador to get two Eldlixers from deck. That's all we have to out, and we definitely have the tools to do so. We're going to normal summon a copy of Tribute Lanius. I don't think we have much worth sending. One more Mimicry, I believe, is it. From here, we'll activate Nest's effect to send back this copy of Wise Strix, which we will then summon, in order to summon a copy of Strangle from deck, summoning a Singing afterwards. We'll go for Raider's Knight and activate Raider's Knight's effect to go for Blaze Falcon, which you have not yet seen, before going for a Soul Shave off of Wise Strix's effect. We'll make Raider's Wing and then use Strangle Lanius to bring back Last Strix so we can make Shrike. It doesn't target, so we're able to banish one of the two, and Soul Shave will bring back the Stranger Falcon so we can make Arsenal. From here, we should have enough to get through at least one Reborn, and our opponent, realizing this, allows us to deal lethal damage.
So we're back with the deck and I am so sorry. I have never succumbed to playing click yes turbo worse than I did in this video. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, it plays really well through most interaction. Nearly every single card in the deck is extension. Oftentimes I would outplay myself because I underestimated how far the deck could go. Two, Satellite Falcon is unreal. It's an unrespondable Harpy's Feather Duster. I seriously cannot comprehend how no one is considering this card. And three, it's really good in time. You can basically play your first turn for 40 minutes. And the cons. One, it's too hard. It's unbelievably difficult to pilot. There are some bread and butter lines, but usually you're adapting to hand traps anyway. Two, the ceiling is pretty low unfortunately obviously you can play ad nauseum but you often lock yourself early and the best you can manage is looping four strixes and three it doesn't really have access to negation going first as a result you want to blind second but uh that's not really a good idea when any competent deck can lock you out of the turn at the start of the game all in all it's a really taxing deck that requires a very specific mind to play and I just don't think Yu-Gi-Oh! players are smart enough to figure out that this stuff is good. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons Dominic Ernst, Hakuo, AJBYGO, Alex Perea, Caleb Jossa, Candyman, Chaotic Meatball, Chibi Gohan, Crispy, Dim Sum 05, Frosty, Jack Sack PhD, King Magic Ruler, Nightmari, Oli Bjarki Oust Fioro, Rocky Hernandez, Rose Lapine, Sarah Rutledge, Seeker, Space Dandy 1993, Tyler Slacks. Whew, here we go. Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Amit Elefandi, Alex M, Algis Marcin Cavizius, Amaranta V, Andrew Benson, Andrew Ferruia, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Apex Systems, Ball and Stalin, <laughs> Billy Williams, Blake Root, Blair, Candide, Chad Bortz, Chad Weatherington, Chess Prime, Chorps Away, C. Jellic, Control for the Win, Crack Daddy, Crystal Red Fox, Daffy Death Clock, Dan the Man Hoban, Darcy Tevs, Doug Parslow, Dive Missile, Distrin, Eats Puppies, Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Eternal Lamb, Fighting Fangwong, FUTR, Game of a Wolf, Hank Cheesecake, Haroof, Jose Mina, Isaac Jackson, Jack Doherty, Jane Linya, Jared Lorman, Jason Leonard, Jay Gordon, Jeff Leonard, Jose Luis Cortez, Julia Chulian, Callie, Corey Hess, Kurukaze, Lake Bayer, Lawrence, Lightsworn, Gorgon, Lottie, Lucas Angles, Lucas Girdis, Lucky Number Five, Lucas Rizzo Hansen, Major Duncan, Max, Mezzo Emrys, Michael Oskvark, Miyuna Arashi, Mutt Hunter One, Nick Extreme 99, Nero Soup, Nick Dolores, No Penguin, Papa Dragonite, Precise Bike 13, Picnic Blasted, Pro FP2, Pro Yugi Dad, Sam Soon, Sapphic Ashley, Sean Deal, Second Standards Objective, Swinkles, This Machine 237, TJ Steakhouse, Yuri's Best, Zach McKee, and Yuki. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.